What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Alicia Nicole. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of 80s RX for MD. So today's video is going to be a complete deep dive into my step two study method, how long I spent studying, what resources I use, all of that good stuff. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, at the start of my dedicated study period, my first practice exam score was a 219 and I did ultimately end up scoring a 257. I do want to say here before I get too deep into the video that generally I don't really like talking about scores and grades and percentiles and all of that because I feel like it can just be such a stressful topic for med students. The reason why I did go ahead and decide to share my score publicly as well as share my whole journey is just because I felt like um, hopefully it could be helpful to someone, you know, if someone's taking their first practice exam and they're in the two teens, I just kind of wanted them to know that does not mean that it's over for you. Um, you definitely can come back and do much better than you ever anticipated, which was the case for me. I would like to know a little bit more about how I accomplished almost a 40 point jump in my step two performance, then keep on watching. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is just how long I studied. So most people are gonna tell you that they were basically studying throughout clerkships, which is the case if you are preparing for your shelf exams correctly. Me, I pretty much just used UWorld. Um, at the very start of the year, in my first three clerkships in the fall semester of third year, I was using UWorld. I was also using Anki pretty heavily. I would use the online med ed decks. Um, and I found that to be pretty helpful for family medicine, for OBGYN and for internal medicine. Um, but it got to be just pretty difficult to keep up with Anki. Once I started surgery in January, I was just finding that it, there was not enough time in the day. So really in January is when Anki kind of fell off for me and I started just using um, UWorld practice questions. Um, and I would do as many as I needed to, to be done with the questions by like a week or so before the shelf exam so that I could spend the last week going over any incorrect questions. Um, also in January is when I actually started using the Divine Intervention podcast, just um, listening to his shelf, um, shelf exam prep videos like a day or two before the shelf exam. And honestly, I wish I had started that at the start of third year um, because they were so, so, so helpful. But for my clerkship year, that's pretty much what I did in terms of studying. So my dedicated study period was four weeks long, which for me initially felt very, very, very short, which I am ultimately glad I did. Um, that was just best for me. I know how hard I was going every day and I don't think I could have done that for very much longer than four weeks. So prior to my official dedicated study date, um, I did start working on um, practice questions, more mixed set practice questions, like the weekend prior and the week prior, because I kind of had like a week in between when my semester ended and when my dedicated study was going to begin. All right, so what resources did I use? Honestly, UWorld was the mainstay of my study routine. Um, I did also use Divine Intervention Podcast. So in addition to those clerkship specific videos that I was listening to during third year, um, I did also start listening to some of the high yield, um, highly recommended Divine Intervention podcasts, and I can go ahead and leave a link for that for you. You can find that on Reddit. The link will be down below in the description box. Um, I also um, used Amboss. So I'm kind of listing these out in order of how much I depended on them during my dedicated study. So UWorld was absolutely my top, most used resource. I use that every day. Divine Intervention I use pretty frequently, multiple times a week. Amboss, um, I didn't start using it until towards the end of my dedicated, but once I started using it, I did use it every day. And I specifically used that for ethics and um, QI questions. I did use Anki as well, not quite how I would have used it in the first, second, or even third years of med school, but I used it primarily just to make my own cards on questions that I was getting incorrect or concepts that I consistently missed. Finally, I did use the first aid step two CK book. Um, this is something that you will hear a lot of mixed opinions on. There's some people that say it's completely useless. I actually thought it was an amazing resource just because of how succinct it is. If there is a disease process that you just never understood in all the first three years of med school, you never really learned it. 
um, and got a good foundation for it. It's a great book because it'll have a paragraph maybe this big that has everything you need to know. It'll have the pathophysiology, it'll have the clinical signs, it'll have the initial diagnostic tests you wanna run. It's, everything is so well summarized there. Um, and I just think it's a very efficient use of your time and a very efficient way to go and just read up on something really quickly. I didn't find that book very, very, very helpful. I didn't use it a ton, but when I needed it, it was exactly what I needed. A little bit about what my day-to-day -day looked like. So my goal was to get 120 questions done a day. So what I forgot to mention earlier is that somewhere around April, maybe March, April, I started doing sets of 10 mixed questions every day after I reset my UWorld. So I reset UWorld in the spring semester, towards the end of the semester. And the reason why I did this is because I wanted to, I wanted to make the amount of questions that I had to get through during dedicated a little bit more bearable. Honestly, anything upwards of 120 would have been very hard for me to maintain for longer than like two days. So I knew that I didn't want to have any more than 120 questions to do a day. And so with such a short dedicated period, that means you're going to have to really do a bit more work on the front end. So I started doing 10 mix set questions. I tried to do them every day. I didn't always get to them because that was kind of like a lower priority. Um, relative to the questions for whatever clerkship I was in. But I did get a lot of those questions done before dedicated even. So that's what I did. Typically, I would start anywhere between 6 and 6.30 a.m. and do questions until like 9, 9.30 a.m. So for the first two weeks of my dedicated study period, I was enrolled in a step two prep course, um, but everything was via Zoom, but we did have to be there, be present and take the quizzes associated with the course. So that course was offered from 10 a.m. to noon. So essentially I would get my questions done right before that course, kind of get transitioned, be on there from 10 to 12, and then I would usually have lunch around 12, 12.30. Um, and then I would do review for the question sets that I had done that morning. And the review would take me, honestly, I feel like I spent the same amount of time reviewing as I did taking the, <laughs> taking the question sets. So it was not uncommon for it to take me like two, maybe even three hours to get through with reviewing 120 questions. So if I started at one, that would take me till three, maybe 3.30. I don't think it took me a full three hours. I'll say like two and a half hours maybe. Um, and then what I would do next would just kind of depend on the day. So actually during my dedicated study, we were actually packing up to move. So a lot of times I would kind of need a break from the screens. So I would usually take a break, kind of help with the packing and everything. And it was during this time that I would listen to the Divine Intervention podcast. I would just put my earbuds in and do whatever I had to do. Or if I wanted to do some cooking or meal prepping, I would do that. Or if I had like errands to run, I would just put it on in my car while I was driving, take my earbuds when I went in the store, keep listening, literally using every moment in the day that I possibly could. Um, I did not get through all of the Divine Intervention podcasts that were recommended. That is something that I would probably do differently. Um, I didn't even know about this whole list of recommended high yield podcasts until basically my dedicated had started. So I didn't really have the opportunity to plan for it, but I got through what I could. Um, so that's pretty much what I would do from like maybe 3.30 to like five o'clock. It's just whatever daily tasks needed to be done. And then typically somewhere between 5.30 and 6.30, my husband and I would go to the gym. We usually just walk and jog on the treadmill and you guessed it, while I was doing that, I would be listening to Divine Intervention Podcast. I would do some, I'll call it light studying after dinner, but it was nothing like what I was doing in the front half of the day. It would just be maybe making Anki cards for some of the concepts that I'm noticing that I'm struggling with. But these were things that I could do like while watching TV or something like that, just so that I could wind down at the end of the day. So that is pretty much an overview of what my day-to-day -day, um, schedule looked like. So now I want to talk to you about what practice exams I did, when I did them, um, and how I scored on those. Yes, yeah, so I started my dedicated on June 24th and I took um, step on July 24th. So I took NBME 10 um, on June 21st. So that was the Friday before. I just wanted to get a sense of where I was starting so that I would know how hard I had to go come Monday. Um, so that practice exam, I scored a 219. When I took my first step one practice exam, it wasn't even a passing score. 
So on one hand, I was kind of like, oh, well, at least it's a passing score, but I also just felt like there's a lot more riding on step two. So I was hoping to start a little bit higher. The next practice exam I took was in BME 11 and um, I took that on June 30th. So about nine, eight or nine days later, um, I scored a 231 on that. So I was pretty happy about that to have seen some degree of increase in my score. Um, and I honestly was expecting to continue to see an increase from there, which is not what happened. Um, the next practice exam that I took was the free 120, the most current version that's available on the NBME website. I took that one on July 5th and I got 70% correct on that. So yes, I took NBME 12 on July 7th and I got a 224 on that. So this is pretty much when I started panicking a little bit um, because I felt like, okay, I'm really not making any progress. 219, 231, 224, like to me, 219 and 224 are not very different. They're pretty much in the same realm of score and they were significantly below what I was aiming for, which ultimately was a 250. Um, at this point, I started thinking about, do I need to maybe push my exam? After NBME um, 12, the next practice material that I took was UWorld Self-Assessment 1. I didn't take any of the UWorld Self-Assessments for Step 1, and so this was completely new to me. I didn't really know what to expect. Um, I got a 234 on that, and I took by 8, so literally the very next day. So I was just stacking on these practice exams. The next practice exam I took was NBME 13, and I took that on July 12th. And this practice exam, I scored 231, so I was kind of back down to my previous high. So next, I took the 2019 free 120, which again, you can find at the link in my description. Um, I took this two days later, so I took this on July 14th. I actually got an 88% on that one. Then two days later on July 16th, I took You World Self Assessment 2. Um, so this was the first time that I broke into the 240s. I got a 243 on that and I was pretty happy about that um, just because I felt like I felt like my goal was in sight. Um, then I took NBME 14 on July 19th. This was my best score out of all of my practice exams. I scored a 248 on that practice exam. Um, so again, I was very happy to be so close to my goal, but having never seen a 250 in any of my practice exams, I was still very, very nervous about what the outcome was gonna be ultimately. And finally on July 21st, so this would have been three days before my exam, I took the 2020 free 120. Again, you can find it at the link in my description. Um, and I scored an 83% on this. So I just wanna talk a little bit about how exactly I studied and how I changed my study method around the two and a half to three week mark. Um, so I kind of went, I, I had two different ways I approached my sets of 120 questions. So at the start of my dedicated, I was trying to just make sure I got through 120 questions before 10 o'clock. And then I would review all of the questions at once after lunch around one. Um, there are a few issues that I have with that method. Number one, I started noticing that it was not uncommon for me to come to a question in maybe my second or third question set that was closely related or was testing the same concept of a question from an earlier question set. And because I really hadn't taken the time to actually review that, I was getting the same thing wrong over and over. And I saw that happen several times. Also, it was exhausting, number one, to just take 120 questions back to back, but then to have to review 120 questions all at once. So I did that for maybe about a week or so, and then I said I wanted to experiment with doing maybe two practice question sets in the morning, and then start reviewing some of those questions, or maybe one set and then review. Like just, you know, just kind of changing it up so I could break it up a little bit, and then finishing my last set of questions after lunch. I would say, honestly, there were pros and cons to each one. Like after lunch, I didn't necessarily feel like doing another set of questions, but it was nice to only have like 40 questions left to review after I got done with that, as opposed to having 120. So it really just kind of depends on like your style and your preferences in terms of, can you do 120 questions straight? And can you review 120 questions straight? Because you really want to try as hard as you can not to get behind in reviewing your content. So generally that study schedule that I gave you earlier, I would study Sunday through Friday, like a whole full day of studying. 
Um, and then Saturday night, all I would do is maybe do a set of 40 questions or if I had some practice exam questions to finish reviewing, I would do that. Or if I had some Anki cards to make. But Saturday, I would spend the whole day I wouldn't do any studying at all. One thing that I think really made a difference um, between like when I was stuck in the 230s to kind of bumping up to the 240s was that even though I was making Anki cards for my incorrect questions early on, I wasn't really studying them. Like I just would kind of run out of time and the end of the day would come and I'd be like, oh man, didn't get through those Anki cards. So I really started prioritizing getting through those kind of in the latter like two and a half weeks um, and I feel like that really, really, really contributed to like the increase that I was starting to see in my score. Um, another thing that changed kind of around that same point in my dedicated study was that I stopped doing U World, which I know you're clutching your pearls. Um, the only reason I did that was because I was at that point I was 80% through with U World. Um, I knew that ethics and QI questions were a big portion of the exam that can get you points that are not so heavily like medical if that makes sense and not so deep in the science but everyone really heavily recommended doing the amboss questions specifically i mean at this point i had covered a lot of ethics questions through you world um, but amboss in general i will say the questions are harder just like across the board because i also did a few of their like 200 concepts you need to see before the exam those questions were hard but i feel like if you can answer those questions you are very well prepared for the exam um, at the point that i stopped you world like i said I had completed 80% and I had about 66% correct so honestly not the best score in the world but here we are and um, like I said earlier if there was a topic I just continuously was getting wrong a disease process I just didn't know well I would um, refer to first aid step 2 CK book that's pretty much everything that I want to say about my experience with step 2 I hope you found this helpful if there are any additional questions that you have feel free to leave them down below I think I am going to make a video on just things that I would have done differently in general just leading up to step 2 and during my prep and dedicated study period so definitely stay tuned for that video but don't forget to like comment subscribe and share and I will see you in the next video I need to help you. Let's make more. Let's reach more.